Hi, good afternoon. My name is Joanna Larson. I'm from Prince Rupert, a primary teacher up there, and I'm a member of the BCTF executive. And I'm here welcoming you today to a panel seminar on the new arts curriculum. This is the second in our series here. And we were supposed to have four panelists, but unfortunately two were unable to tend, attend. So I'll introduce you to the two that are here. And we actually have some written comments that we'll read out um, during our, our time together um, to get just to stimulate the discussion a little bit more. We have all representatives from all four streams um, in the arts. And we also have Sharon here who was part of the development and the writing of the curriculum. So after I introduce them, I'll have Sharon explain to you a little bit about the process that they went through. Uh, before I introduce them, there's a few other things I want to draw your attention to. If you have any questions or comment throughout the hour, you can email them. Uh, there is a sign up there, arts at bctf.ca. Uh, and Janice Needon, our BCT, BCTF staff person on the end, will be receiving those on her computer and she can share them with us here too. So once again, it's arts at bctf.ca. And if you want, are looking for some really good articles, again, that represent all four streams in the arts in our latest edition of the Teacher Magazine, there's some really great articles in here. And this is um, a really good reference to have a look at and to get you thinking about the new arts curriculum and how that's going to roll out and how it's going to hit our classrooms. So I think I've covered all the basics and I'll introduce you to our two panelists here. We have, to my right, is Sharon Richards. She is a BCTF uh, member who teaches visual arts at Westside Secondary School in Kamloops. She has taught various studio art and photography courses at the secondary level for many years and has served on the executive of the BC Arts Teachers Association for the past 13 years. She also works with Young Artists Committee in her school district, which is an organization devoted to enriching the visual arts experience is for elementary school students. Uh, and to her right is Heather Lytle, a BCTF member from Smithers Secondary School up in the north. Uh, she's also a BCTF member that serves on the executive of the Drama PSA. And she teaches drama, theater performance, theater production, musical theater, script writing, and directing. She has been pass passionately working with students in theatre for the past 22 years, and Heather currently sits as a member at large on the Association of the BC Drama Educators PSA. She hopes to be able to continue this work as an advocate, not only for drama, but all arts education in our province. And the two panelists whose comments we will have to read out to, unfortunately, because they were unable to attend. Jill Sparrow Ng, and she would be representing the music. She's a music teacher in Delta. And Kimberly Walski, a BCTF member who also worked on the, uh, one of the ministry's curriculum arts education writing team. And she's the president of the BC Dance Educators Association, a PSA. So I will... Um, we have three questions and then hopefully we can supplement with some of the questions that we get submitted to us or from people that are here in the room or just ideas that come to us as, as we start this discussion. I'm going to start by reading Jill's comments to the first question and then I will have Janice on the end. Um, oh, and I forgot to... <laughs> Introduce Janice Needon, who is uh, a long history in the BCTF and is now currently working on staff and helping organize a lot of the work from the building that we are, are doing around the curriculum and, and its development, our curriculum teams. So Janice is going to read um, Kimberly Walski's comments that she sent in, and then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Sharon and uh, Heather to add their comments. So the first question that we have regarding the new curriculum is what is positive about the draft curriculum and about the process of its development? So from the dance perspective, can you hear me okay? Um, they felt that there were good points in the curriculum. They thought it was thoughtful and considerate, but a little bit wordy. Um, and they felt that teachers needed to read quite a few ta times to understand the real issues or the essence of the curriculum. They also liked the Aboriginal content, but felt that the lack of clarity or resources makes teaching it very daunting. 
And the perspective that Jill offered us from the music scope was that what's very positive is that all four disciplines are included. There's chances to explore common elements between the four disciplines, line, color, space, articulation, etc., and to focus on artistic habits of the mind. As I give it to Sharon, I'd, I'd kind of, I wanted Sharon to do this first, but I made a mistake. But maybe Sharon can actually explain a little bit about the process of how it was developed and written. Sure. Is that loud enough? Okay. Um, what we did is we met about a year ago uh, in April and May throughout uh, four different sessions. We met uh, two weeks apart for two days, and it was all the um, arts together. We had representatives um, from multiple grade levels as well as from all of the arts and we um, wrote several documents um, some of which appear on the, on the uh, ministry website right now and what we did is from grades K through 8 we wrote the arts curriculum integrated together not that these are curriculums that necessarily have to be integrated but um, they're presented together as one package so for example with kindergarten you'll see all of the arts understandings shared together on one document, but then you can basically, if you're an art teacher, you can plug in um, whenever it says works of art, then simply we're talking about visual art, or if you're a drama teacher, you'd be talking about the art of drama and the kind of works of art that come out of that. And we also wrote um, separate documents for grades eight through 10. So we have um, visual arts eight to 10, we have uh, drama eight to 10, we have music 8 to 10, and then the dance 8 to 10. So there were two options at the time that we gave the draft documents to the ministry, but the, the um, grade 8 ones, the only one that's been posted online right now is the Integrated Arts 8 document. Um, however, there isn't that sense that you don't have to teach it all integrated together. So a person doesn't necessarily have to do a unit that encompasses all the arts together. And um, so I, I guess the big thing we want people to then focus on is um, maybe giving some feedback to that and seeing how they think about that and whether or not there's some confusion that arises out of that. I don't know if there's anything else that I should suggest about that process. I think unless we have any questions that come from it. Yes. Um, yeah, so there, I think we'll start then with our first question, which is what is positive about the draft curriculum and the process of development? So if you wanted to add to that, please. Sure, um, I would um, echo what the others have said about the intention to embed Aboriginal understandings and the first people's principles of learning throughout the curriculum document. Uh, very excited about that. I think it's about time that we did that. And um, should I go through all the ideas, all the, all the positive things, or do you want me to... Turn that sure, over to I'll, you. And I'll just jump in. I, I mean, I think all four of us are are sharing similar um, concerns and, and similar ideas around what, what we're liking about where the curriculum is going. So, sure. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, another thing I was I, I think is really exciting is that the big ideas are more prominent. I think we've always had the big ideas in the arts before. But now, instead of them sort of being embedded throughout the various curriculum organizers and through the various learning outcomes, you can see at a glance sort of the three or four most important things about what it is we teach. And even though we as educators, as arts educators, have always understood those, I think those are not as easily understood by people who do not teach our subject area. Now, anybody that goes on to the ministry website, they can see we're not just about making pretty pictures, but um, that it's we're dealing with things on a much higher level of thinking and so we are an intellectually rigorous area and it's not about like i say pretty pictures or learning how to shade or you know doing a little skit or something like that that um, our discipline is is um, much more i guess intellectually rigorous would yeah. be what i would call it and i think sharon you had mentioned earlier that it was appreciated by arts teachers that curriculum this curriculum was written early in the process yes. rather than late in the process as it has been in the past, right? Right. To the, the previous go around we were the last curriculum document to be written, whereas we were written we were writing alongside all the other curriculum teams, which seems to suggest that there's a recognition on the part of the ministry that our discipline, our subject areas are just as important. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Which is one of the positives that I would throw in is is just that um, that there has been that recognition of, of how important 
arts education is and that the big ideas that that we deal with in arts education which is the you know the critical thinking the creative mind the personal and, and social responsibilities are very much a part of you know they're the competencies you see mm -hmm. in all the curriculum and they're certainly what um, you know being recognized as being important in, in ours as well yes um, one of the other things that we were talking about um, earlier today was that um, one of the positive is the intentional blurring of the lines between the disciplines <clears throat> so that it's it there's an opportunity as you see in the art world um, often one discipline crosses over into another and you see a visual art performance for example that incorporates aspects of performance that ties in music or that ties in body movement or things as part of the visual mm -hmm. performance and so seeing what other um, arts are doing all at the same time on that home page kind of creates that opportunity and that blurring of the lines isn't just in, in, between the arts disciplines but the lines we've been given permission to blur those lines between other disciplines as well because we know that what you learn in one class often enhances what you're learning in another class or relates or connects to that um, the discrete and separate um, subject divisions that, that we've had typically in education that they can be somewhat artificial and it's nice that there is that opportunity to cross over into other disciplines. And because they've all been condensed down to big ideas it's easier now to have the time and the ability to sift through what all of the other curriculum documents are saying. So you can, you can take a look at where um, what they're doing in social studies might fit with, mm. with the big ideas of what you're doing in, in an arts program. Yes, and that's also that, that hope that um, as the website gets more developed that you'll be able to be clicking on links that will take you to the other places in the curriculum and that you can move around and navigate more easily and that will enhance um, unit planning, lesson planning, um, collaborating with other teachers and all those mm -hmm. sorts of things as well. One of the things that you had mentioned earlier when we were chatting um, was, and, and you mentioned it at the beginning, was the integra integration of the Aboriginal content and the First Peoples principles of learning and that, and that's a real positive that I find that is quite prevalent, as you said, it's in each sort of section as you drafted the curriculum. Um, would you be able to comment a little bit about that? Well, we, we actually, we met with um, representatives from FINESC and um, they shared with us the first people's principles of learning. We also, there was a, a strong attempt to make sure that there was a First Nations educator on every curriculum team and we were fortunate to have one on ours. And um, uh, we had Yvonne Menzies from uh, Merritt School District and she went through with all of the um, aspects of our curriculum writing team, the K to 2, the grades 3 to 5, the grades 6 to 7, and then the 8 to 10 specialists, and helped all of us craft some of the um, draft concepts and competencies around Aboriginal understandings. And so that was um, very helpful and, and sort of high time that we were doing that in BC. Great. Is there anything anyone would like to add before we move on to the second question? Um, maybe the process of development, because I think we've talked about sure. about the curriculum itself, but maybe not the mm -hmm. the process. So I wasn't involved in the in the process of writing. So, um, well, it was really good to have so many teachers involved that were in the classroom um, to be, come together and write a curriculum document. It was great to be able to also work positively with the various um, partner groups and not be at odds while we were working with that. We just really found that really valuable time. The length of time on the f for feedback on the draft, we've had almost the entire school year. We've had about eight months that it's been up for feedback. It was kind of rushed around the time that we were doing the initial drafts, but we were able to communicate it out through our listservs and through our various networks to get feedback on what we were doing to make sure that we had um, input from our colleagues around the province as well. Sharon, can you just talk a little bit about the composition of those teams? Some uh, members of the public are under the impression that it was just BCTF members meeting with ministry staff and interpreting it that oh, way. Oh, not no, not case. at all. We had, um, we had administrators. We had um, a representative from independent schools as well. And we had um, district um, resource people. So it was a real mix. And then we had a consultant 
uh, for the for the ministry that was a retired administrator as well. So it was it was yeah all the partner groups um, all the educators were really um, involved in that process. Okay, before I move on to the next question, I would just also like to let you know that if you have any questions, comments, thoughts about the new curriculum as you're going over it, you can access uh, behind the portal on the BCTF webpage. If you go to curriculum, there are curriculum forums that you can post to, so you can post your thoughts, ideas, concerns that you have and um, engage in conversation with your colleagues about the curriculum. So we have a couple of those set up behind there and I invite you all to try that. And I'll move on to the second question. Yeah, just look for discussion okay. forms when you go to the portal and it, you'll okay. be able to access. You do, you will need your member ID to access. It is behind the portal and then you yeah. click on curriculum and then discussion forums, yeah. correct? And this also, this it will be archived. Um, this presentation right here on the live stream and you also be you could probably just google that and find it uh, in the future if you wanted to reference it or to share it with your colleagues or to leave feedback or to leave yes you can also leave that. feedback that's another place to leave feedback so the second question we have is what concerns do you have about the content or the process of development and I'll share the music perspective from Jill which is um, the concern around the integration of all four disciplines that could devalue the uniqueness of each, music, dance, drama, and visual art. This is especially concerning given the new focus on skills the ministry is talking about. Uh, our other er subject areas, science slash math, language arts slash social studies going to be integrated in the same way. The performing arts, drama, dance, and music integrate more naturally than vis visual art. How the essential elements, skills, and techniques specific to each discipline can be taught by generalist teachers. Learning standards need to be very clear and specific for all four disciplines. And grade eight is problematic as the configuration of schools is not consistent throughout the province. We have schools, grade eight is part of middle schools and in some cases it's part of the secondary schools. So that adds an, another challenge. At what point should students be allowed to focus on one discipline that they have a passion for? And developing artistic habits of mind needs deep understanding of a discipline from practice over time. So I think some of these concerns are around the time and the support teachers will have to put these in place in their classrooms. Uh, it's certainly a concern as a uh, primary teacher that I am. I'm looking at this and I think it's, it's fabulous where we're headed, but I also look at my classroom and the time and the demands and tr where does it fit in? Where can we make it fit in and how can we make it happen? So. Uh, Janice, if you'd like to share from the dance educator's perspective. So from the dance perspective, some of the concerns echo what you just read, Joanna. Um, the fact that dance does not have its own curriculum is problematic. They feel it's marginalized as a subject. We have fought for dance to be mm -hmm. recognized as a subject and wondered if it not, could not be arts education but then have each art have their own curriculum. They feel that the language of dance is missing as well as the grammar of dance. Um, there's a lack of scope and sequence, um, terminology, devices. The content does not change much from grade to grade. Uh, they need tools, techniques, and processes defined. Um, lack of the word embodiment or body. And they really want dance to be a doing subject, not just a reading and watching dance event. So it echoed, I think, a lot of what um, the article that you read. Um, what about the, each one of those areas? Where did they fit? Are they lost within that integration? So Heather or Shannon? So I would say, um, the discussion at the drama PSA was again quite similar. Um, very important to us to see at the secondary level um, the, the four strands um, separated out again and, and uh, you know for there to be a specific curriculum for each of those subject areas. Um, also lots of discussion about the um, where the curriculums are at right now and so and so 
there being links available for um, some of what um, she was mentioning there with the dance to to the resources mm -hmm. available to, mm -hmm. to teach the subjects and the assessment tools and strategies and, and those things. So right now there's you know very beginnings of, of what is some exciting mm -hmm. curriculum development, but certainly not and hopefully not um, finished products and hopefully um, stuff that will continue to include teachers in the process of, of defining and creating mm -hmm. as we move forward and teachers who teach the subject areas that's important yeah I mean some of the things that you say I think remind me of, of some of the discussion that was going on while we were working on the draft document and that is that the curriculum is intended to be what they call three-dimensional rather than two-dimensional and so all we're seeing right now mm -hmm. is the two-dimensional front yeah. page and so I think some of Kim's concerns around the things that are missing the intention is to flesh those out and to um, develop those so that teachers who need more direction will be able to go deeper into the curriculum and teachers with maybe more experience that have been um, working with those kinds of um, that content, the competencies and so on, that they will only go as deep as they feel they need to go. So that would address that. But I would also echo the same concern about the optics of a document that seems to suggest that we now are teaching all of the arts all at the same time, always. and that wasn't the intention behind creating an integrated document. The idea was to, uh, be, behind the ministry, was to get to the big ideas sooner, so to find the things that we have in common, the things that we share, and um, not to suggest that teachers have to. But yeah. it looks to people when they first arrive on that front page like that's the intention, and we would worry that uh, administrators and new teachers that maybe um, weren't part of the curriculum writing and haven't been um, teaching in the field that, that they might make that mistake and think that uh, we're supposed to be integrating everything and I know I said one of the positives earlier that one of the positives is the blurring of the lines between the curriculum uh, the various curriculum documents but it's not just intended that you only integrate with other arts you can integrate with science you can integrate with social studies, with philosophy, you could be doing environmental units, eco units, all sorts of things, um, working on educated citizen and various other other things as well. And it seems to suggest that when we talk integration with the arts, we're simply talking about doing a unit that combines all of the arts together and that's that was not the intention. I'm also concerned with that integration that some of the arts might be overlooked in favor of one of the arts. So, for example, in one school, if you have a strong um, program, whether it be music or dance or whatever of the arts that you're talking about, that people say, well, that's our integrated arts curriculum. We've got it all covered. And then they don't notice, wait a minute, there's no dance going on in the school or there's, there's not much visual art going on in school or whatever you know, discipline might be lacking that looking at it as one, as one subject area might um, cause one to overshadow and dominate the others. Sharon, you brought up around the topic of integration, you brought up a stewardship being part of um, the uh, curriculum and how that links to not just this one area but other areas as well. Could you highlight that a little bit? Well, that concept comes from Aboriginal um, culture. It's a notion that you find um, amongst our First Peoples. and that has got to do with um, how we take care of our environment and the world that we live in and our response to that and I could see that enhancing science, I could see that um, even to, in terms of our civic responsibility and our responsibility to each other and that becomes very cross-disciplinary and so you could be meeting uh, competencies from a variety of curriculum documents all at the same time. It would be kind of nice to have a way to be able to assess those mm -hmm. kinds of things as well and not be bound by subject areas with that as well so that if students are doing like for me I teach in the secondary if students are doing something in my class that is also helping further what they're doing in another class it would be nice to have a, a mechanism to share that information with the teacher of that other subject as well. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of? Yeah and it might be where the competencies that cross all areas into that's that. right, and then the clickability and the ability yeah. to link up between the various documents, that's where it really becomes advantageous. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
especially if students are going to be keeping e-portfolios or things like that, that mm -hmm. they would keep, be keeping track of all of that sort of stuff. I know they're doing that in some districts. So um, I, I wouldn't mind just interjecting a question that I have um, because I think it naturally fits in. When we're talking about uh, cross-curricular work and blurring of lines with curriculum, uh, we know that that's the best, the most holistic approach that we use in our classroom, but there's the reporting aspect of it and the evaluation piece, and that's where a lot of teachers, and myself sometimes included, with, when you've got those demands in front of you, we get hung up with you know those narrow because we have to report on this we have to um, be able to um, assess this here and there and I'm wondering if you have any comments around um, if there was any discussion in drafting the curriculum around some of the evaluation processes and what teachers could there was lots of discussion about what we would like to see but the assessment piece hasn't been written yet and it's not been shared with us and we really felt that we would like to have been doing that at the same time but one of the challenges of doing multiple subjects all at the same time is that everybody is all working in various spaces and and places and um, so the ability to share that information out is very difficult I would think um, y you would find that challenging as a primary teacher imagine as a secondary teacher just how much more challenging that is because we don't have access to other teachers mark books where the grades are being reported and so on and so um, the difficulty of sharing that it'd be nice to have a system where you could actually um, be reporting on the competencies rather than simply right. putting a little number in a in a column beside a subject area right. and that's my, oh, sorry that's yeah. again my concern around the feeling that this might be finished too soon mm -hmm. because there are a whole lot of other pieces mm -hmm. um, and not just the assessment but as we get up into the graduating years and, and where kids are going and, and um, it, how that affects university and, and post-secondary education. Um, yeah, it, it, a lot needs to be done still. It's, we're just, just beginning to flush this, this stuff out. Well, even in terms of educating people about what the marks mean, yes. right? And how yeah. to read that information, that, that is yeah. a big piece right there too. Uh, that yeah. tweaked uh, another comment that you made earlier about um, works of art, I think it was, and what it, how that looks different in the different disciplines. Would you be able to comment on that piece? Um, well, I was saying earlier how the term works of art um, doesn't have reference just to visual art, yeah. that it could be a dance performance, it could be a musical performance, and so in the curriculum document we've just used the term works of art and basically the idea is that teachers would plug in whatever work of art they're dealing with at that particular time and that they're not to look at that curriculum document and think okay now we're doing another painting or another drawing or we're looking at a piece of visual art is that kind of what you were, mm -hmm. yeah, what you were thinking about yes. yeah. yeah and so uh, we were trying to use a generic term because um, when, whenever you, people say art, they right away automatically think that we're talking about visual art, we're talking about drawing or painting or sculpting or something like that. And, and so everywhere in um, the K through 8, everywhere you see the term works of art, it doesn't specify what particular discipline you have in mind. And you as the classroom teacher would be deciding what particular art form you're dealing with and then just simply plug that in and use the appropriate list of elements or principles that fit that particular discipline. And that. making sure that you're addressing all of them. Yes. Because they, it, it, as much as they're integrated into one document right now, they're still very much for separate disciplines. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk about the focus that each one of those specialty areas brings. You talked earlier, both of you, about the perspective and how it different differs between each one of those disciplines what the drama teacher's perspective brings to it, the dance, the musician, the art, and how that factors into what that curriculum would look like. So what we're, what we're thinking about is that with the reduction of specialist teachers, with the reduction in non-enrolling staff, that it'll be become much more of a catch-all. It'll be um, a generalist trying to deliver all these areas and what you miss out on in that is the um, specialist perspectives. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? 
I would be concerned about that trend happening at the middle school level because um, especially if people sort of misread or misconstrue from this particular document that now you just need this integrated arts curriculum. Right now, grade eights, they would have a music teacher, they would have a drama teacher, they would have an art teacher, and the, the students, they gravitate towards the people that kind of speak the most to them. And so I have students that would choose a visual arts program, they would choose to be um, in my classroom with my philosophy and approach, which is very, very different from what a drama teacher has. It appeals to a very completely different kind of yeah. student. Um, I would have students that are much more internal, they're much less um, out there, they're much less into the performance, they're more into being reflective and introspective, and if all of a sudden you eliminate those specialist teachers, if students want a teacher that's going to be um, allow them to be more introspective and reflective mm -hmm. and have a completely different atmosphere and philosophy. If they don't have that person in the building, then their mental health is really at risk. I see we've got a question. Jane. I didn't want to cut you off. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really enjoying your answers. Thank you. Um, I have a question. I want to go back, Sharon, to the comment you made about the recognition of the importance of the arts with this curriculum. Um, so how do you think this fit, or what's your thoughts about how does this fit into the ministry's BCN plan? Because it seems to me that there the emphasis is on skill development and preparing students for their future work life. So do you see that there's a disconnect, or, or is there a fit here? I'm not quite sure how to answer that one. Do you have yeah, any? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure I understand what you're asking, but... Um I don't think there's a disconnect. I, th I think that um, in arts programs, what, what we're teaching is very much about life skills, right? And we, we had this discussion earlier, too. Um, very few students would come out of a, a drama theater program and go into acting. It isn't about that. That's, that's not what the course is about. And, and occasionally, you have those really passionate people, and that's what they go on and they do. Um, there's so many other skills being taught in those programs and, and as Sharon was saying different different programs deliver that differently right so so artistic expression and analysis and creative thinking looks different in my space than it would in Sharon's space and then it would in in a different drama teachers room probably even so I'm not sure it's at odds with with what we're you know educating global citizens um, but I'm not sure if I'm actually answering your question either. I think too possibly that we have to, even though this study was done many, many years ago, we have to um, remind people about the results of the Royal Sullivan Commission mm -hmm. that took place mm -hmm. and the fact that um, it was really clear from all the people that were um, consulted in that whole process that the learning and the arts, the creative thinking, the problem solving, all those kinds of things that they were hugely important to the workplace. And the results of that study, that study may have been done many, many years ago, but the, the, the results of that study, they haven't changed. The, yeah. the facts of that particular study are still the same. You still want creative problem solvers, innovative thinkers, and so on in a rapidly changing world. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that mm -hmm. really is Anything at the core. To me, it, it just proves that this needs to be, if we're going to go in that direction, with the BC Ed plan, then we really need to remind people that if that's really what we want to be doing, then the arts have to be at the heart of that. And along with that, if it's well done, and that's always the key to it, um, there will be there are fewer learning outcomes that should theoretically allow yes. time for deeper learning and understanding. But it all depends on how it's rolled out, what kind of resources they have, mm -hmm. how well teachers feel prepared to be able to deliver this type of curriculum. So if I can kind of pin, uh, maybe paraphrase what you're saying is that as long as the BC Ed plan is really about those generic skills that all students need to succeed almost anywhere in the work, in work life, you think that, that the arts curriculum as it's currently constituted would do that for them? So those problem-solving skills, those uh, creative skills, the the analytic skills, the deeper appreciation of of um, complexities, all of those things are, are there for you in this curriculum. Yes, and the ability to express themselves in a variety of formats as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And and I th and I think they always have been part of arts programs. You know, it, it it's really just coming at it from a different direction. I I don't think the curriculum, the way it looks now, is suggesting that we're doing less. It's we're just coming in at it from a different direction. I know I've heard so. some talk from people where they're, where they're concerned about the dummying down of the curriculum. That wasn't the intent in this no. whole process. In fact, if you look at what those um, different aspects are, the different competencies and the, the content you, and the big ideas, you'll see you're, you're dealing with you know, fairly sophisticated skills and abilities and, um, and intellectual level that the idea was to streamline as opposed to just make it easier. So one question that came uh, throughout that discussion to me is sort of what Janice touched on, is that the success of it really depends on the comfort level of teachers and their ability to mm -hmm. roll this out in their classrooms, um, which speaks to, and right now we have, we, we do, we struggle, certainly uh, I work in a primary environment and we are very, very focused on the visual arts, but probably not so much mm -hmm. on the other disciplines as we need to be. Well, music is also incredibly um, very prevalent in primary classrooms. Mm -hmm. Not so much, uh, I mean, dance and move, they're all there, but perhaps not as, mm -hmm. as present as they should be. And so for me, this is sort of tweaks that, yes, I need to focus more on um, the dance piece and uh, the drama probably. But uh, in order to do that, again, with all the demands and sort of the expectations around where we do, do have a tendency to still compartmentalize subjects, you know, math, science, and social studies, and those types of things, in terms of uh, support for teachers resource-wise and uh, training, the in-service piece, has there been any discussion around what would be required? Um, and, and I would put it back to that you need to be comfortable with the curriculum, right? To feel confident mm -hmm. to go into your classroom and tackle something um, that might not be sort of in your personal bag of tricks that you need to kind of extend yourself and learn something new. So was there any discussion um, maybe developing the curriculum or anything about what you would like to see or what you feel perhaps, maybe you haven't discussed it, but perhaps what you feel would be necessary to make that really successful in the classrooms? Well, we discussed uh, the idea that curriculum is different than resources, right? And, and so probably what you're asking for there are more access to resources and to in-service and that type of thing, which, which isn't really the, the curriculum so much as, as a, a different need and a different piece, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and yeah, it, it's a good question. Where, where is that mm -hmm. going to come from and how, how will that be supported? Yes, and we've had lots of questions around that. Susan. Yeah. And actually, to add to Joanne's question, um, so how will non-specialist teachers that, um, if there are no specialists, such as art music specialists or First Nations teachers, um, how will teachers be able to ensure that they don't end up teaching about Aboriginal people in a stereotypical or superficial way, such as the dime dance dress sort of superficial way that it's sometimes taught? That's a huge concern. Um, that's that would be one of the things I've heard the most feedback about from teachers around the province is is our teachers certainly would love to embrace Aboriginal art um, I mean, we've got this beautiful art right in our doorsteps we've got art in our own communities from a really rich heritage there's no question about that but people are not really clear about what appropriation is and is not they're not clear what's sacred and what's not they don't know what the protocols are and so I really think we need to make sure that um, that that there's some kind of professional development and and connection with the resources and um, some direction from the ministry and the various different groups in terms of reassuring people about that and making sure we do that appropriately uh, I don't have an easy answer for that because I think that's something we don't really know about yet. And until all of that is in place, I think people are going to, for fear of offending, they're not going to really fully embrace that aspect of the curriculum, which you know is a terrible shame, but you know you don't want to you don't want to be um, insensitive. You don't want to make something that's sacred profane, right? Mm -hmm. That's not what you want to do. So you've got to make sure that we do it properly. 
it's a it's a terrible responsibility and I think especially for elementary school teachers I mean I have the good fortune of teaching in in an area where I where I'm you know mm -hmm. um, specialized and it's focused and so I'm not having to go out and learn all these other skills that are outside of my my comfort zone right and I think that's a, it's a terrible burden that elementary school teachers have to deliver all of this different curriculum to their students and so yeah with that responsibility is 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 an awful lot of work so it comes back to your question about how is how is that supported and how are we making sure that that our teachers do feel comfortable and do have the tools they need to deliver all of that programming. Can and that may vary from district to district and school yeah. to school too. Like I know in our own district, in District 73, we have a First Nations Education Coordinator. And um, we've had one for quite some time and there's a lot of work that's been done collecting resources and they're on a resource website. It would be really nice maybe to have the curriculum document link up with these kinds of things that are already in place so that when, when you're looking at Aboriginal understandings within the curriculum that you can click on that and then somehow it will take you where you go to your own local community because certainly it's important to, to um, start with your own local Aboriginal people and it would be nice to have um, be able to go right from the ministry document to some of those resources that are in place. That maybe is a good place to start. Can we talk about access, the pros and cons of accessing local resources? That, that was actually the, just the um, note that I just made too that twigged a conversation we had earlier about um, that idea that if, if we're trying to address all of these things, if, if we're just bringing in um, somebody from the community to to do something with our students around dance or around drama or art, um, that that's not necessarily addressing the whole curriculum. And yeah. we need to be careful about that. Um, and, and those are beautiful things that should be happening. We should, we should be reaching out to our communities and, and accessing those resources, um, but also be really cognizant of scope and sequence and, and skill sets that are particular to the different arts curriculums. It's still the educator yeah. that's needed to yes. tie yeah. all those pieces together. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and yeah. to know and understand what the layering of those mm -hmm. skills are. Yes. I mean, you need a fairly mm -hmm. sophisticated understanding of your not only your discipline but also the um, the subject matter and um, the curriculum and how students learn, um, all those sorts of things, right? Yeah. yeah. So just to come in as somebody who has a particular skill or talent, that isn't necessarily. Um, going to be enough to, well, it's not going to be enough to replace the t classroom teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Jane? Could you give me some advice? Um, how do you think we can help teachers develop the skills and understanding of, uh, around that are, that are intrinsic to this new curriculum um, who maybe don't have them? when the annual general meeting just passed a motion um, and therefore it's policy now and procedure of the BCTF that teachers are not to use their professional development days to learn about new curriculum um, coming up from the ministry. So, so how are we going to get teachers to learn um, and, and grow their understanding and experience with this when we're not supposed to use our PD days to do this? So, so the districts mm -hmm. need to really step up to the plate here right. with the money that they have available to them for professional development and allocate some of that towards um, curriculum implementation and not in service. Yeah, and, and not try to do an end run around curriculum implementation language, but to you know it has to it has to keep in synergy with the development of the curriculum. The curriculum is about collaboration and co-construction and, and let's work on this together. So saying, well, this is done and now you, you look after this, it, it, that isn't keeping with the intent or the spirit behind how this curriculum was written. So we need, the districts need to have a responsibility to step up and uh, spend some of those monies um, that are directed towards them for professional development. Sorry, didn't mean to change. No, no, <laughs> there's just been such a big shift in the curriculum in terms of the way it's packaged and um, the way that we're intended to respond to it and, and treat it. And it, it's, it can't be done in a one-day workshop. No. 
Like this is, we're talking about a significant shift in how and why we do things. And so there needs to be certainly considerable resources uh, that provided to us that put attention in here. Like I had heard some suggestion that perhaps the PSAs can take on some of this and certainly we do what we can to support our colleagues. We, we print um, lesson plans and unit plans and, and professional journals and various other sorts of things and share them with our colleagues. But we don't really have a lot of resources at our fingertips. We just get our funding from just from our membership people that sign and choose to be members of our PSA. So we really don't have resources available to us um, to be doing in-depth professional development so that people are really well versed with this curriculum and really understand it. And working in the elementary, I think there needs to be a very concrete laid out plan that, and, and it, there does mm -hmm. need to be mm -hmm. a significant investment in it because the other piece that um, we've only touched upon is for elementary teachers. It's all of the curriculums are being rewritten at the same time. So it's, it's major changes to every areas of our work. And so I know, I know we've talked about it, you mentioned it, it being a burden. There, it, there are, it depends on where you are, right? It's a burden, but it's also an incredible gift in the yes. sense that yes. to yeah. have the same group mm -hmm. of children, and if you want to blur those lines and do mm -hmm. cross-curricular mm -hmm. things, it's, it, it's, it's, it, for us it comes natural. And I taught kindergarten for many years, and it, it's survival 101 in a kindergarten class, right? You just blend everything. Um, but when you are doing that sort of wholesale change to everything, it changes, it will change your whole practice. And you yeah. can't simply do that through um, your own investment in, in professional development because professional development is, if I, if I wanted to if I wanted to be better at teaching music in my class or I wanted to explore a new medium in terms of visual arts to bring it into the class, that's where those things, where I want to go in really deep in a particular area um, that would enhance my professionalism, but th that wholesale change and how we're going to fit everything together and how I'm going to do that with my colleague next door and across the hall is a piece that really the ministry is going to have to kind of step up to the plate and school districts are going to. And it's going to be, it's not something that is going to be done in a day, no. a month, or even a year. It's going to take a long period of time. Um, and so for me, that's the most disappointing part right now is that that's a, a, an unknown. A, and I, we've discussed this already and I don't know if you could comment and give me mm -hmm. hope in that. <laughs> in that area, but I know it's been a concern that's talked about on almost all of the curriculum teams that have been working, so um, I don't know if you have any thoughts. Well, a an advice to the ministry, too, is that I know that six non-instructional day has been targeted to the trades, um, and, and that's probably a political decision, but advice would be um, this is a change that affects all educators. It would be important to target that six non-instructional day towards curriculum yes um, so that members could have some time and some space to really wrap their heads around this complex document and what it means because what ends up happening is members read this with a they don't have the time and space to delve into it and it becomes a very cursory look um, there's much more to it than that so uh, that would be a start and I mean that's just one day. It is. And this is the kind of thing where you're best to be doing this with colleagues. Yeah. And working yeah. through it together. Yeah. Because the whole two heads are better than one kind of thing that um, I, I think especially for um, teachers that are fairly new to the field mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. they really would they would, and for your generalists really unsure uh, when they read some of the some of the um, the um, the concepts or some of the um, competencies they, they might know exactly what it, it's saying, but they not, might not be sure that they do. They might think, well, is that what I think it's saying? I'm not sure. And to be able to bounce that idea off, off of somebody else that's maybe a good resource for them, that would be really valuable time. Yeah. And so, I mean, you need a lot more than one, 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 day. one day, right? Yeah. Yeah. And even just one day would be, you know, like you say, a start. It's a start, yeah. And we're talking about a paradigm shift in how we deliver and assess the curriculum. Right? So it, that doesn't mean that everything that people are doing right now is being tossed out. There's, no. You know, there's so, yeah, time together collaborating with colleagues to, to 
discuss that as well, right? Because there's there's a whole lot happening that isn't going to look a whole lot different just because the curriculum documents look a whole lot different. And just to get some reassurance mm -hmm. from your mm -hmm. from your colleagues and from mentors as well. Just because cu new curriculum is written doesn't mean practice changes. It's about what happens in between that space between yes. the curriculum and practice. That's what will affect change. A curriculum being written doesn't mean practice changes necessarily. Mm -hmm. But understanding the need for that change in writing the curriculum yep. and why you know where that's coming from and what that's about, I think is is some of the important mm -hmm. conversation that. I think that's it part of the happen. reason it's important for us having sessions like this so we yeah. can hear yes. a little bit how mm -hmm. the curriculum was written and what processes people went through and the discussions that um, brought upon those changes. So it's important for people to hear that background piece before they just look at the words yeah. on the page when it comes mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And make assumptions about what's written yeah. there like yes. Sharon was saying. Yeah. Just the optics, right? The yeah. misconceptions. We have 10 there. minutes, so we should probably go to... Yes, um, before I go to the third question, which is about looking ahead, I did want to make note because we did have mention of some of the BCTF policies, and I just want to be clear that uh, it's important that the you know that the ideas discussed here are in the BCTF seminars are not policy positions of the BCTF, but they're aimed at providing information for teacher considerations around the new curriculum directions. Um, so they're not necessarily written in our members' guides. You won't find them there, and they're not written in stone. It's, uh, it's kind of living discussions that will hopefully take us to a better place. So the final question, is what advice do you have for the BCTF and its members about the next steps for the curriculum process? Do you want me to start with the dance perspective? Sure. They would dance would like a scope and sequence written for them, um, a consist and consistent language used from grade to grade, and they would like dance as its own subject and more specific dance and choreographic language included in the curriculum. And for music, to have specialist teachers involved with determining what the essential elements, skills, and techniques for each discipline should be for the learning standards. So I'm not sure what you would like to add, Sharon. Well, I'd like to see members out there make suggestions about links and resources that should become part of this. So we go from that two-dimensional document to that three-dimensional um, space that we were talking about so that because um, the ministry is going to need some some input in terms of what kinds of things we need to see there, what thing, which which sort of items do you want people to click onto, the kinds of things that you want to have available, the things that you don't know, the things that you think are missing in terms of um, those resources to enable people to be able to um, implement this particular uh, curriculum, mm -hmm. that especially less experienced teachers or or generalists. Mm -hmm. What what is it that you need to know in order to be able to achieve the, um, the uh, concepts and competencies. And as we discussed earlier, that the different art forms really do reach different students. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's important information for the BCTF to bring back to the ministry that, that we, do, we do need all of those disciplines to be taught in the schools. And it's not OK to say hey, we have a great visual art program in our school, so we're done. That's that's our arts program. Right. They're, um, yeah. they're very different. They have their own languages. They need yes. their own resources. And even, uh, we discussed earlier today, even within our disciplines, there are many different strands. Mm -hmm. The, the theatre production is a very different thing from theatre performance, from musical theatre, from script writing. Mm -hmm. Those are very, very different courses. Heather and I were talking about that over coffee and saying that um, you know, people know that science is multidisciplinary, that there's biology, that there's chemistry, and so on. And, and um, so I, I think some people make the mistake of thinking, well, we've integrated the arts together just like science, and they don't realize we already were multidisciplinary in our own separate areas. So mm -hmm. with, with art, you have separate coursework, drawing and painting, sculpture and ceramics, photography, and, you yeah. know, you've got all various other kinds of things in the other areas as well. You've got 
um, choreography, you've got um, composition, musical composition, and so on. So we're already quite multidisciplinary. And I think we need to keep a close eye on what is going to happen, sort of to reiterate what Heather was saying, to make sure that um, it, doesn't, it doesn't get lost. And, and also to kind of um, sort of highlight again that we do actually have Visual Arts 8, Visual mm -hmm. Arts 9, Visual Arts 10, the same t with music and with dance and with drama. And those documents have been written. They're out there. They haven't been published online. And I think if people would like to see those documents and they want them posted on the website, you really need to communicate that to the ministry through their mm -hmm. feedback site before it completely closes. And that is like very, very urgent and imminent because they are going to be closing that very, very soon because they've had it up for most of the school year and they want to now go on to the next stage of the process. So for those dance teachers, those drama teachers and so on out there, you, if you would like to see them actually work with that, they're basically going on the feedback they've got and if they get just all glowing positive feedback on the integrated arts mm -hmm. curriculum and they don't get people expressing that they would also like to see these other documents, mm -hmm then who knows, they might not make those available to people. And since we do have um, the arts curriculum being delivered differently and different configurations in different school districts, those of us who teach in an 8 to 12 configuration, we navigate the curriculum a little bit differently than people that are in a middle, middle school configuration. And so I would like to see personally, I would like to see an, a visual arts 8 that looks somewhat similar to a visual arts 9 as opposed to something that seems to fit in with K through 7, since I don't teach K through 7 teachers. And then maybe other mm -hmm. people would have a different perspective, depending on their teaching situation. Sharon, do you want to mention your website mm -hmm. and how the, some of that, uh, the early drafts are posted? Sure, there? yeah. All the early drafts of Visual Arts 8, 9, and 10 are actually posted on the BCATA website. And the address is really simple. It's bcata.ca. And right on the home page, there's a link to um, curriculum documents and change as well as the things that have been posted on the ministry website and links to all of that so you can certainly get more information about that mm -hmm. I just yeah in, in the process of, uh, uh, of the curriculum and development has the uh, needs of students with special needs been focused on at all is that a, you know I know that the Aboriginal you know, aspect was but in the, in the arts, is there any focus on, on you know, what, what we should be doing to uh, be more effective with students with special needs? That didn't come up in our particular curriculum writing. It didn't come up at all. It wasn't addressed. I think, I mean, good teaching practice that addresses the needs of, of those kids with special education programs is also good for all other students in your class. So I think. I think that just naturally is part of, again, the delivery of, of the curriculum. I think yeah. one of the points that's related to that, though, Mary, was something that we talked about earlier, and it was the big ideas, um, examining whether they were really appropriate for the age that they were geared towards. And, yes. And that would be uh, something worthwhile for members to have a look at. Yes, I would, like, I would really like K through 7 teachers, I guess K through 8 teachers, look at look at those big ideas and make sure they're age appropriate and developmentally appropriate um, because that was the big thing that we really struggled with was those big ideas and trying to make sure that they they grew basically as you went up each level because um, that was something new that we were being asked to do like usually in the arts we have the same big ideas from kindergarten right through to grade 12 just like with the educated citizen uh, the fact that they're kind of this, the same thing and you just see it increasing in sophistication so that was a new thing for us so I'm not hugely comfortable mm. with with the scope that you see or the sequence that you see there, and so that would be very, very important to get everyone's feedback on that. And, and connected to that, I think, um, consider students with special needs in your classroom and have a look at those big ideas and reflect upon the students and see if those would be appropriate or not. My guess would be in many cases you would be modifying and and probably replacing it with completely different big ideas for some of them and then I mean I personally I'm comfortable with modifying and adapting but that may not be every teacher's experience so certainly there needs to be a conversation around special needs and students with learning difficulties yes. mm -hmm. yeah. I think again that's a question that's come up in all the 
in all the curriculum teams and that and that there's definitely more room for discussion and thought around uh, the integration of special needs and in, in all of the as, as the new curriculum rolls out in all the subject areas so it seems to be a huge conversation that's still kind of maybe percolating but needs to happen yeah. um, and hopefully there will be some more ministry um, guidance around that and it gets difficult for teachers because the scale of modifications that teachers are allowed to do has it's been scaled back a lot over the years so adaptation yes modifications not so much depending on who the student is and what designation, what they, designation have, yes. they have so it gets complicated yeah. but anyhow I see our time is just about up there's a few areas that um, we didn't really get a chance to touch much on but the grad review um, which is happening and is just starting is underway I think the the team uh, sorry Janice they're called the grad prototype prototype <laughs> and they've met once and so the plan is they'll they'll need to meet again hopefully and then the earliest the grad curriculum teams would be um, starting would be the fall it appears right yeah. so we're waiting for that piece to see how yeah. that all unfolds and fits in as well as the evaluation piece I think yes. there's still a committee that's meeting on that and how that ties in and obviously that would be um, an interesting one in terms of the art curriculum mm -hmm. and to what that looks like yeah. because it's not something that you can use a standardized tick in the box to evaluate and how is that going to fit in in the big picture as well so um, I'd like to just reiterate that you're welcome to visit um, the portal the BCTF portal on our website and post your comments reactions to this discussion thoughts that you might have going over the curriculum um, and you can find that through the portal under curriculum and it's called curriculum discussion forums and I would like to thank our panelists that were here today and did I forget anything no I think that's it thank you very much everybody it's a pleasure